Yeah, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to uh, this exchange, which is very useful and that it comes at the uh, crucial point of time, as in two months' time, the Commission uh, will present its proposal for the uh, next multi-annual financial framework. And uh, uh, this time round, I think it might be perhaps uh, especially uh, uh, tense to uh, come to uh, a, a, an understanding on how we would go forward as the UK is exiting and there are new, new demands coming on the European budget. Within the budget, the cohesion policy uh, somehow uh, considers, uh, uh, stands for about a third of the spending. And uh, we have carefully looked into the uh, uh, question of how successful is this policy. When we look over the longer term, going back from the 80s until 2008 when the crisis hit, we found a very strong and unbroken convergence. Then the crisis has hit and during uh, uh, six years uh, we had divergence of, uh, uh, and that disparities were uh, um, uh, growing again. But since 2015, uh, we are back on a convergence track which seems to be uh, quite stable. So overall, the record of the policy is it has contributed significantly somehow as a convergence machine uh, to the uh, growth and uh, consolidation of uh, European uh, regions and member states. And what I would like to highlight is uh, that the policy, to some extent, does this through an effective mechanism. Consider there is 0.35% of the GDP involved. If you compare that to the level of transfers that, for example, the US has at the federal level, of which are about 20%, we have done this with relatively modest budget uh, input. How we did it? Because we targeted uh, the investments very much uh, on uh, the regions and the countries in need, namely the poorer regions. And through this targeting, you reach considerable level of uh, uh, an impact. If you measure this, for example, uh, through the share uh, that cohesion policy has in the public investment, take uh, Portugal, 60%. Greece, almost 40%. During the crisis, these figures, during the peak of the crisis, these figures were even uh, higher. It is undisputed that the policy delivered on the ground very uh, substantive results. Um, in the area of enterprises, uh, 80% 80,000 startups were, uh, uh, um, were created 2007 to 13. 200,000 SMEs received support. There were more than 2,700 kilometers of rail uh, built, 25,000 kilometers of roads, and many people, 10 million people, uh, received support for training and retraining uh, through uh, uh, the policy. Measured in terms of GDP, if we take uh, the eastern, central and eastern European uh, uh, countries, it added during last uh, period about 3% to the GDP growth of this region. And we must, I think, also say that the policy has somehow earned some merits during the crisis itself. Because we have applied a very flexible approach to assist countries who had been hit the most. Take Greece. Public investment was more or less on a standstill uh, in the peak of the crisis. And through cohesion policy, very important investments could go forward. Take the motorways. You have now in Greece, perhaps one of the most modern system of highways. And this was finished during the last years uh, uh, in the context of the crisis. There is also another uh, argument which uh, supports the, the, the policy on more global grounds. It is a redistributive policy where the richer countries pay money to the poorer countries. For example, the EU 15 paid to the four Visegrad countries, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Slovenia, in the last period about 120 billion euros. If you 
just sum up the, 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 the transfers. But on the other hand, about 90 billion of benefits came back to EU15. Through what? Through contracts which had been won by firms coming from these countries, but more importantly, perhaps, through an increased and deepened trade flow that we have uh, seen uh, uh, to develop. And that helps the overall integration of the, uh, of the uh, uh, European Union. We have learned a lot of lessons, and I will come perhaps in a, in a minute to that, especially during the crisis, and in particular when looking at the southern European countries. And uh, I think definitely there is uh, uh, good ground to do things in the new period perhaps differently than we, we have done it in the past.